So to get started with the quarter columns, um, I decided to make a practice one. So I uh, ripped some poplar to inch and a quarter squares and then glued it together with craft paper in between each of the uh, sides here. And then uh, I turned it on the, uh, the lathe uh, to the appropriate diameter or what I think is the appropriate diameter and uh, so I've got it marked out here I'm going to make three quarter inch flutes uh, across each of these faces and then split it apart to see how how I like it so to do that I've got the uh, I made a jig here I've done this uh, before with uh, smaller ones and it fits on my lathe and uh, we'll see that in a couple of minutes here but uh, it's made so that the router fits uh, right between it here and uh, so I can slide it along and uh, I've got a uh, indexing device on the on the lathe so that I can turn the column uh, around the uh, diameter and hold it in place while I run the router down uh, to uh, make the uh, flute so I could do it with the uh, a hand uh, beater uh, uh, or scraping tool um, and we'll see whether or not we can do it as well with the router so that's where I'm gonna gonna start out so uh, we'll give that a shot so I have the uh, turned column uh, mounted in the uh, the lathe now well, with the jig of course and uh, I've got the plunge router set up here and it just slides back and forth uh, across the the frame and then uh, you can see the indexing wheel that I've got on my uh, lathe here so uh, you know uh, it, it keeps it locked uh, in a particular position and then you can count the number of uh, holes over uh, to uh, align it to the three uh, flutes that I want to cut so uh, we're gonna give it a pass here and see how we do well I've made four of them and I'm not particularly uh, you know, satisfied with any of the four this one here uh, the last one I made is about the best but uh, I may have to revert to a scratch stock here yet I'm gonna split this apart and then take a look at it how it looks on the uh, on the chest Splitting it apart here with a chisel, uh, it's uh, pretty easy, uh, you know, once you get it wedged in the end, the paper just starts to give away, and uh, I'm doing it one-handed here, trying to hold the camera, I suppose I should uh, do it with two, but anyway, you see, it comes apart pretty easy because of the paper. So this was the best of the uh, four that I made, and uh, it's really ugly. So um, I've got a, a bunch of work to do uh, to get this right. So probably going to make a scratch stock here and uh, work on a different method. So I'm ready to start all over and make a new uh, quarter column piece. So I've cut my uh, craft paper here and I've got uh, some soft maple since I'm out of poplar. So these are inch and a quarter. And I've got the four of them, and then uh, this is the craft craft paper that I'll use to put between them. So I'm going to use hide glue again. So I've got that warming up here, and uh, so it's a little messy project here of spreading the glue on the wood and then sticking the paper to it, and then put the whole thing together. So uh, we'll check back after I get it glued. Well, I built a scratch dock here. Uh, that fits into the uh, cradle that I had built uh, for the lathe and the router so uh, this gives me an option uh, so I'm gonna uh, turn a new column now and uh, try some different methods uh, of making the uh, flutes to see uh, what I would uh, like uh, better so uh, yesterday I ripped uh, some maple and uh, glued it together here with the with the craft paper so it's uh, all set to go so we'll be turning that to see if we can get it round first 
all set to turn it around here. Well, I've got the uh, cylinder round now, and um, I turned it as best I could, and then I uh, used a spoke shave and a, a scraper to uh, get it uh, smooth, so it's not perfect, but it's uh, pretty good for testing. So I've laid it out here with uh, four uh, across the, uh, the face here, and they're uh, set up for the uh, scratch stock. So uh, we're going to give the scratch dock a, a try here, so uh, I'll pick you up when I get it mounted. Well, I'm on my second groove at the moment. The first one, I think the, uh, the uh, jig was out of square, so it cut the groove and uh, it went off on the end here. So I uh, reset the, uh, the way the uh, jig is anchored to the... To the lathe and um, so I'm starting to scrape the second groove now. Let's see if I can keep it straight. And you can see the groove is going in there. It's a bit of work but uh, this one seems to be quite straight so uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, I think I'm getting somewhere. The last two that I did, that's these two here, they came out pretty good. Um, what I did was I have a 3 16 inch uh, straight router bit, and I pre-routed them. So I just ran, uh, didn't run it all the way to the bottom, but uh, nearly to the bottom on these two, and leaving myself. And this, this uh, scratch stock is a 32nd of an inch wider than uh, 3 16 so it just goes in there and cleans it out and it's a whole lot less work when it's uh, pre-routed so the first one I messed up because the uh, thing wasn't square the uh, jig wasn't square but the last three this these two here and this one down here have come out pretty good so uh, I kind of like uh, four uh, with a, this there's an extra thick piece here because I didn't have it lined up right in the beginning so I'm going to do it again obviously I've got three more sides to practice on and we'll see if we can get a couple good ones this is the last of the grooves in this particular set of four here in the underside of the, the scratch stock. And you keep going until it stops cutting and then you have a consistent depth. This one's got about another 30 seconds to go but uh, you get the idea. Well, here you have it. Um, I've got the uh, first of the uh, quarter columns uh, placed in where it belongs, and uh, I like the fluting. It's nice and even and uh, reasonably deep, but it's uh, too large. Uh, I'm having to have to uh, turn the uh, cylinder uh, smaller. I've only got a sixteenth of an inch here and here, and it needs to be at at least an eighth of an inch. Um, so I'll have to watch for that uh, when I uh, turn the next uh, set, uh, which will be the cherry set. Now I've got to practice turning the capitals. Uh, I'll do that and then uh, we'll do it uh, for good on the cherry. Well, I got the cherry uh, turned down now and uh, smooth as uh, best I could. Uh, so we're going to I'm going to give it a shot here and uh, try and put some grooves in them. Well, I turned the capitals and the uh, base for the 
quarter columns here and I have the, the block so that it'll split apart four of them. And then I can cut it uh, down the middle here and then adjust the lengths of the straight pieces. So uh, looks like I've got all the components now for the quarter columns. So let's see if I can put them together. Well, there you have it. Uh, the quarter columns are made. Uh, I completed the uh, turnings of the capital and the base yesterday evening and uh, this morning I cut it apart and um, sanded in uh, both the uh, quarter column as well as uh, the capital so they're sanded to 180. The whole chest is now uh, of course sanded to 180. Uh, later it'll get sanded even more but uh, it takes a bunch of clamps to hold it in place and I'm uh, just about ready to glue it up here but um, I'm reasonably happy at the, the way it uh, came out so you can see it there down to the base and uh, so we're gonna glue it up and uh, that'll complete it so then the next thing to do is work on the molding <laughs> 